Pioneer's next in-dash receivers offer Apple CarPlay for iPhone users. With CarPlay, drivers can use Siri voice control to make and receive calls, compose and respond to text messages, access Apple Maps for navigation, and listen to their favorite music, podcasts, and iTunes radio. CarPlay offers drivers a smarter, safer, and more fun way to use their iPhone while behind the wheel. Let's take a couple of moments and we're going to check out Apple CarPlay, how to set it up, and how it works on your Pioneer Next head unit. Even though your particular receiver may have buttons on the side or across the bottom like this one, the on-screen operation in this demonstration is identical for the following Pioneer Next models. AVH 4100 Next, 4200 Next, and 4201 Next. AVIC 5100 Next, 5200 Next, and 5201 Next. AVIC 6100 Next, 6200 Next, 6201 Next. AVIC 7100 Next, 7200 Next, 7201 Next. AVIC 8100 Next, 8200 Next, and AVIC 8201 Next. As you can see, on the back of your next head unit, there are two USB ports. USB port number one is here on the top. USB port number two is here on the bottom. Use USB port number one right here on the top for Apple CarPlay. Don't try to use USB port number two for Apple CarPlay. It does not work. Use the extension that came in the box, the USB extension that came in the box, uh, to bring the USB port number one up into your passenger compartment where you can plug in your compatible lightning cable. You can use the cable that came with your phone to connect your phone to the head unit for Apple CarPlay. Or you could use the optional Pioneer CDIU52 cable and keep this cable in your car. Do I need additional software on my phone or on my next receiver to make Apple CarPlay work? Let's start off with the receiver. You should go to pioneerelectronics.com and make sure you've downloaded and installed the latest firmware update for your particular next receiver to make sure that CarPlay will work. On your phone, if you have an iPhone 5, 6, or 7, any variety, and the latest version of iOS, you have everything you need to make CarPlay work. If you're looking for additional CarPlay compatible apps, check Apple's website for the CarPlay compatible apps and download and install them onto your phone and they will operate on your next receiver. Okay, so you've run the extension included in the box of your next head unit from USB port number one up into the passenger compartment. And now you've plugged in your compatible uh, lightning cable, so USB to lightning cable. All we need to do to get started with Apple CarPlay is check one setting on the head unit. Now most of the next head units won't need this setting, but some of the older models will. So let's check that setting. From any of the sources here, I'm going to touch the gears. And I want to go to the toolbox or the wrench and the screwdriver there. And then let's check the input and output settings. And we're going to go to our smartphone setup. From smartphone setup, we want the device type to be iPhone and iPod. The connection type is USB. And we want Apple CarPlay switched on. If you choose any of these other types of connections, digital AV adapter or Bluetooth, you'll see that CarPlay is not available. So you have to choose the USB connection type and you want Apple CarPlay switched on and you can see that it's lit up here and ready to go. That's all we need to do. We'll hit the X. Now before I start driving, I'm going to take my lightning cable that's plugged into USB port number one and plug it into my iPhone. If you're an iPhone user, you probably recognize some of these icons on the screen for making phone calls, playing music, uh, using maps, and getting full turn-by-turn -turn instruction, sending messages, and so forth. And if we drag across here, you'll see some additional apps that I've installed on my phone. And since these are CarPlay compatible apps installed on my phone, they're also available in CarPlay. There are many more apps available than these. This is just a small sample. I'm going to drag back across to get to my main screen. So here are a couple of things that you can do uh, in your car with Apple CarPlay. The first thing we'll do is make a phone call. Who should I ring for you? 
Call Reginald. Calling Reginald. And here you can see we're making a phone call to my buddy Reginald. When we hang up, we come back to our favorites list, and we can touch the home button here to go back to the main screen. We can play music, and this is music that is stored on my iPhone. We can also play music by voice. Play Text You Later. Okay, playing Text You Later by Caster. If we check the Now Playing list, let's go back to our home screen and we can uh, use the system for turn-by-turn -turn instruction. We have a couple of different ways to do that. We can open maps, and I can touch destinations up here, and I can use the microphone button to, uh, to input a destination by voice. The other way that I can do that is uh, just press and hold the home button for a couple of seconds. Navigate to Heinz Field. Getting directions to Heinz Field. And that will open up maps and automatically create a map, uh, create a route to go to Heinz Field with full turn-by-turn -turn instruction. Starting route to Heinz Field. Head north on, then turn left on drive. The Hey Siri option works great with your Pioneer Next head unit, but you have to switch the Hey Siri option on on your on your iPhone. So let's go to Siri here. And we want to uh, make sure we have Allow Hey Siri switched on. That's all we really need to do. Now, make sure you've set up the Hey Siri uh, settings in your phone. And then we can just uh, use Hey Siri and CarPlay. Hey Siri, call Percival. Calling Percival. Hey Siri, send a text message to Reginald. What do you want to say to Reginald? I'll be there for lunch. Your message says, I'll be there for lunch. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, I'll send it. Hey Siri, when is the Penguins next hockey game? Hockey coming up. The Penguins. Predators game is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Hey Siri, play That Was Close. Remember that your Pioneer Next head unit has a ton of music sources available. And just because your phone is plugged in and CarPlay is up on the screen, you can still use any of those music sources. So to get out to the Pioneer system, just touch the Pioneer button right here. That will take us directly out to the Pioneer system. And you see we have the CarPlay button up here. We can touch that to go back. Another way we can do that is to touch the Home button. And your head unit may have buttons on the side, but it's the same home button. And we'll go back to CarPlay. And one more, one more way to make that work is to touch the Mode button over here. And that brings up your Pioneer system. And if you touch the Mode button again, that takes us right back to CarPlay. When I'm using Apple CarPlay, the volume control becomes a very powerful tool when used in conjunction with my iPhone and my Pioneer Next head unit. So right now, uh, please note that I have uh, no, the, the, the iPhone is not plugged in right now, so I'm just using the Next head unit standalone. And when I touch the volume control here, you see we have the HD radio volume control, and that's because we're on that source. Whatever source we were on is the volume control that you would see. But you don't see the alerts or the CarPlay volume available right now. Now. So now before I start driving my car, I'm going to plug in my iPhone and get to Apple CarPlay.
Okay, we plugged in the phone and the system will automatically switch over to Apple CarPlay. Now, when I touch the volume control, you'll see a couple of different volumes. Here I have my Apple CarPlay volume and I can adjust that up and we also have the alerts volume and they are independent of one another. So the Apple CarPlay volume is the volume of the music that you hear playing and, uh, and of a Siri's voice as she is talking to you. Um, the alerts volume that you see here is for navigation alerts and we can adjust that independently here using the keypad. Navigation alerts when I receive a text message or a telephone call the alerts uh, volume is what you're hearing. So those are independent things. And additionally, we have a telephone volume as well. So let's make some examples of those things. Here, I'm adjusting Apple CarPlay volume with a podcast that's playing. And we'll turn Apple CarPlay volume down and the alerts volume doesn't change at all. To adjust the alerts volume, I can push that up a little. I'm going to put it up to 25, and I'll receive a text message. There, I received a text message, and you heard that ding in the background. The alerts volume will change. If we put that lower, and we get another text. You could barely hear that text message come in because the alert is much quieter. When we play back messages, want to hear unread messages or create a new one? I'd like to hear my unread messages. You have two messages from Reginald. What time is lunch? Lunch is at 12. So as we adjust the Apple CarPlay volume, Siri reading back those, uh, those messages, that volume adjusts. Now, when I receive a phone call, we have an additional volume adjustment. This is the phone call coming in. We can make, we can make it louder or quieter. And when I answer the phone call, that same volume control will operate the voice that I hear from the remote caller. Alerts are a very important part of using the navigation system built into Apple CarPlay. Navigate to Heinz Field. Getting directions to Heinz Field. Now we'll adjust the volume here. And alerts, we'll turn it up high. Starting route to Heinz Field. An interesting note is this. The telephone volume and the Apple CarPlay volume are independent of one another. So it's interesting to note here that the telephone volume was up at 20, 21, or 22, and the Apple CarPlay volume for playing music was down to one or two. Two independent volume controls for different functions of Apple CarPlay.